This new leadership came in. They came in pretty hot. They've dialed it back a little bit. I looked into some of the numbers coming into this. Some of these were compiled by their the Mises caucus's enemies, the classical liberal caucus, which but what they compiled here is that revenues are down historically when you adjust for inflation and not only big donors but monthly donors are down and I looked into the actual reports behind the numbers and it's all accurate except the LP did not adjust for inflation which seems like something you should do. Well what do you mean raise prices? <laughs> like um the raise the membership the, the, cost? The, they're showing rev like in the LP reports the revenue looks kind of like slightly up because inflation um but if you adjust for inflation yeah, revenue yeah, is at historic lows yeah but so what's the your takeaway from that my takeaway is that revenues are down monthly yeah but i mean that's like you know that's like if you have a job where you're making 100 grand a year and then you just keep your job and someone's looking at that and go like uh dude your your income is way down from there i mean yes that's true but that's i, I mean if you're blaming the federal reserve then i'm with you but if you're blaming the mises caucus no for no, that, no i'm, I'm, I'm right. saying the federal reserve and the mises caucus. okay we're, we're i'm we're saying technically i mean usually when organizations measure their historic revenues they would adjust for inflation that's not true uh, if like coca-cola puts out like earnings statements they're not going to adjust okay. for inflation okay but coca-cola well, isn't going like well, let me, there'd be like no we took in three bit we had three billion this year 3.2 okay billion well this we'll, year, we'll three, leave it for the audience sure. to judge whether that is a good or bad number sure. but uh what do you think is going on here internally well i mean just to to be clear like i'm not you know, I have no position in the Libertarian Party. And like, if you talk to like Angela or someone like that, I'm sure she could give you a much better answer than this. I'm not like on the LNC. I just I'm, I just do stand up comedy and podcasts about this stuff. But from what I, I understand about it, there was they did have this major problem with like this software thing. Um, I, I don't exactly know the details of it. This is something that started before the Mises caucus took over and all through them where it's a, a big basic disaster of transferring data. So I think that hurt him a little bit. But regardless of any of that, um, it's like this. I think that the the state of the Libertarian Party was no matter what happened at Reno, going to it was going to be a rebuilding, you know, like a couple of years in this sense. That there's a lot of people who were very turned off by uh the Mises caucus in the Libertarian Party, and there were a lot more people who were, you know what I mean, willing to go to to fight for them, and that's why we won. Um in terms of the the stuff with donors uh, walking away, again, like I said, it's just to me if the if the calculation is going to be that well, like like let me say it like this, right? There are kind of these storms that come in where things are very sensitive to talk about. Like right now, it's the Israel Palestine storm that we're living in, where it's like kind of takes a little bit of courage to talk about these things because you know you're going to get this backlash. The storms end. And then it's like, no one cares. Like I, lab leak theory. Any of us worried, worried about talking about that now? You worried about your YouTube channel getting, no, it's fine. You can totally talk about it. That was, we were in a storm a couple of years ago where you couldn't talk about that. Ukraine is like that, right? And for me, libertarians are, when we have value at the most is when in those storms, we're willing to stand up and say the courageous thing. This is why Harry Brown writing, uh, uh, when will we learn on September 12th is like the most amazing thing ever because the day after 9-11 he had the courage to say that the the only way this libertarian party thing is ever going to work and grow is if in those storms we have the courage to say things now but, I'd agree with you but that's that, what I'm, but I, that I could come there. without some of this other well, stuff that's not there. helpful I want to stop there though but that's not what the Mises caucus is doing I would say I would argue they are how I mean, that I'm talking about every single one of these uh, conflicts. So like the, the Ukraine storm, when that came, they were the first ones standing up opposing that policy. Right now in Israel, doing the exact same thing. So like that's the type of thing that I do think the Mises caucus has that but they bring to the table. Is there a use in that if nobody takes them seriously anymore, right? Like, like Well, and, I don't and think that's true that nobody takes them seriously anymore. You think people anymore. still take them seriously? Yeah, I don't. I went from being like, yeah, maybe I'll vote for the LP presidential candidate to now it's like I would sooner vote for anybody else available on my ticket than these people. But because why is that? So what, if the, what is their crime that's worse than I, Joe I, Biden and Donald Trump? I mean, I'm just I'm stunned by the shift toward I don't I don't believe if you actually, I think, put any of these people in power, 
I'm not sure they would know the first thing about what to do with it or how to actually craft any sort of policy. I mean, you have text exchanges from Angela McArdle and Michael Heiss talking about how uh, personally bankrupt they are and how much money they've lost in the process of doing this. I'm sorry, but if you can't run an extremely small, just speaking candidly here, political party and you're not able to, you know, keep your supporters in any way, what, why would anybody trust your competence overall? Like, I'm just very, who are you? I mean, who are, who's even running for president this year, right? Well, like, they, like if, if the, I, but, but if the idea is, you know, you are a political party and you are putting candidates up for, you know, election for political office, surely they should be people well, the with some elephant amount in the of room name is that and, da Dave was going to run for president uh, yeah. and you didn't run for president and now they're kind of flailing. I, is that kind of a... Many of I mean, I think you're I think you're kind of overplaying this kind of like no one takes them seriously and it's... I mean, it's they, like They have their text messages. There were those text messages yeah, and I mean, I don't want to comment. Where personally... I don't want to comment on private text messages that people like no, put and, out and, there. And, I, and, I also just think that's lame and wrong. I, no, and, and it's also why, like, it's Steve, not... You'll note that you could, that's look, also I, why... I bet I could find... If I found private text messages, right? Like, let's say I just had access to all of your texts with your wife and your texts with your husband. I bet I could cherry pick them and, and put them out there and be like, look, their marriage is failing. Look at this one exchange that I found here we're out of money yeah okay well fair enough um <laughs> but uh but i'm just saying like you so i don't know like you're telling me you got one exchange but these weren't, these weren't well, messages between say. spouses right and and i also no, i don't no, know but like they're messages note... between co-workers still they're messaging between I, I mean i don't know even technically what you would call them but the fact that in a moment they're like complaining about something i'm not gonna like draw too much of a conclusion from that i do think like yeah, like there's been their membership and 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 money is down. The Libertarian Party historically has had lots of different periods before where membership and, and revenue have been down. In fact, they've had points where revenue was very down, but membership was very high. They've had points where the vote totals were the highest, but the the membership was very low. There's been the truth is that the Libertarian all Party, over the map in a bunch of yes, yes, but I also agree. for the entire history, they've largely not been successful. That's the truth. We took this thing over a couple years ago, and it's a huge restructuring. Uh, um, you know that's been going on now in terms of like me not running yeah look i mean there, there's definitely something to that like i was considering that that was kind of like a rallying point for a lot of our guys and i decided not to do it um and so there's been some disappointment about that but i do think that like i'm i'm hopeful that over the next year and over the next couple of years this is going to like because i almost think of the mises caucus as like it was like this cleansing thing where we had to like return to like radical principles that are what the party was started on to begin with and then kind of like now out of that has to grow like candidates because that's really what rallies yeah. people well, so that I, are radical so pr principled candidates. I want to take this seriously because I agree with you, right? Like there was a reason why I didn't choose to like tweet and take a little gleeful victory lap about the, you know, text message and email revelations about all the trouble that LP was in, right? Like I agree with you that it's important not to draw overly broad conclusions about that. But say you wanted to take your argument seriously and you wanted to look for these small green shoots that are poking up through the dirt as to the ways in which the Mises caucus takeover has been successful. Where would you tell us to look? Well, like okay. what, what should we look to as evidence of, you know, actually it's pretty good. Well, actually, I mean, look, trending it's a, uh, there, there have been like actual, what the libertarian party always kind of has only is that there have been local elections that they've won and that stuff does matter. I mean, there are, you know, there are people where we've gotten like on school boards and on city councils and uh, mayors, I think a couple sheriffs, you know what I mean? Throughout the country. Again, I'm not like heist is a better guy to talk to about all of this stuff to like rattle off all the names. They have launched this, uh, the Mises caucus has launched this project decentralized revolution thing, which I think is a really great, um, like template for how the libertarian party should run. And it's very different than the way it's been used before, where kind of like the strategy for the libertarian party would be like, um, you know, you show up to like your state affiliate and they're like, what can I do? And they're like, I don't run for something. And whereas this is now targeting like winnable elections with nullification powers. So that's kind of like the idea is building this thing where the national is kind of like messaging and then trying to funnel that into like the local which winnable the elections with nullification powers. strategy of like the Sunrise Movement, I believe, which is like the organization that initially put a bunch of money 
behind Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Okay. Right. Like, yeah, like yeah. there's you know a specific there's like a big infrastructure. Yeah, but they're on going the even more local than that, yeah, which is exactly. like I mean, Heiss was saying sheriffs are a big one because mm -hmm. they've got a lot of power and um, or like a city council member or something like that. Things yeah, that well, are the idea is people uh, positions where you can nullify federal uh, um, laws or federal mandates. Right. That's and kind of there's what you relatively target. low voter turnout, yes. so you actually so have a chance of winning. Yeah, right. So, so that's, that's kind of yeah, the the plan. And yeah. then the the thing is that. You know, again, like I said, the other thing to me is just that it is like, look, there I'll I'll take responsibility in some way that a lot of my guys on Twitter are like can you know can fly off the handle and say some some wild shit. But the one thing I will say about my guys is they don't compromise on the libertarian stuff. And they're not gonna be afraid to like, you know, say the thing that will get you a lot of backlash when it really matters. Now I wish, I'm like I said before, I'm not for a lot of the edge lording stuff. I don't like that. That's not how I run my Twitter. I mean, I'll insult people sometimes if they insult me first or stuff, but I'm not like- The non-aggression principle applied to yes, insults? Yes, kind of, right, my okay. version of You're that. You're like, if provoked, well, I, can, I suppose. I, I can be a little bit vicious on there sometimes, so I'm not like saying I'm perfect or anything like that. Have you ever in fact like been that. vicious to anybody in this room about Was say, I vicious to you? Uh, RFK Jr. <laughs> No, just well, kidding. I, I think I think I don't was, think I was that. You know, what, honestly, you. I don't think you were either. Um, it was Michael Malice who was vicious. Um, oh yeah, well, Michael Malice is a, a furious woman. You got to be careful <laughs> about him on Twitter. No, I mean it's all in good fun. I, I'm also the type of person where I can just take it. Like I don't care. Twitter much, also kind of does I that think. to all of us. Yeah, oh, you know, completely. like it just it is it this thing that it's that, yeah, it's right? just and it's hard not to like get sucked think, into that. I think but they, I don't think I don't think like but I don't think that I don't think I've gained like a following in the libertarian side of things because of any of that. I think like people li like like me because I'm good at explaining this stuff. And like, to me, that's always, that's the way people are converted to, you know, like people will bring up like that one time Ron Paul was on uh, uh, Morton Downey Jr. And he kind of snapped at those people. But that's never anyone's origin story. No one ever goes, I'm a libertarian because I saw Ron Paul on Morton Downey Jr. They go, I saw him explain history to uh, Rudy Giuliani. Dave, I think you're un possibly unintentionally making my precise argument. I am so in favor of being bold and aggressive and courageous and truth-telling and saying that unpopular thing at an important time. I mean, I felt very riled up in the COVID days. Um, and it sometimes felt like I was maybe not at reason, but like, you know, one of the only people in my sort of social circles, very comfortable sticking my neck out and being like, no, fuck no, you shouldn't be forcing me to show my vaccination status at the door to enter a New York City restaurant. No, how dare you? And to the extent that you are going to force that, everybody should forge them. I'm sorry, but like the Liz Wolf forging services are open. I'll do it for the low, low price of zero dollars. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens, or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.